After successfully completing this lesson, you'll be familiar with different types of rotodynamic pumps, the component parts of rotodynamic pumps, maintenance of rotodynamic pumps. There are three different types of rotodynamic pumps, axial flow pumps, centrifugal pumps, and mixed flow pumps. An axial flow pump uses a screw propeller to axially accelerate the liquid. The outlet passages and guide vanes are arranged to convert the velocity increase of the liquid into a pressure. As distinct from the centrifugal pump, the axial flow pump absorbs the maximum power at zero flow. A mechanical seal prevents leakage where the shaft leaves the casing. A thrust bearing of the tilting pad type is fitted on the drive shaft. The prime mover may be an electric motor or a steam turbine. The axial flow pump is used where large quantities of water at a low head are acquired, for example, in condenser circulating. The efficiency is equivalent to a low lift centrifugal pump, and the higher speeds possible enable a smaller driving motor to be used. The axial flow pump is also suitable for supplementary use in a condenser scoop circulating system, since the pump will offer little resistance to flow when idling. With scoop circulation, the normal movement of the ship will draw in water. The pump would be in use only when the ship was moving slowly or stopped. The pump is reversible, and this, in conjunction with high capacity flow, makes it suitable for trimming and healing duties as well. The pump casing is of gunmetal for condenser cooling duties and cast iron for healing and trimming pumps. The impellers are of aluminium bronze and guide vanes of gunmetal are arranged immediately after the impeller, the pump shaft being of stainless steel. In this part of the lesson, we'll take a closer look at the centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pump duties are usually for the movement of large volumes of liquid at low pressures, although higher pressures can be achieved with multi-staging. A centrifugal pump can be further defined as a machine which uses several energy transformations in order to increase the pressure of a liquid. The energy input into the pump is typically the fuel source energy used to power the driver. The remaining energy transformations take place inside the pump itself. The rotating pump shaft is attached to the pump impeller, which rotates in a volute housing. A particular feature of centrifugal pumps is that the power absorbed is a minimum at zero flow and therefore can be started up against a closed valve. By increasing the size of the impeller and or the speed of pump rotation, we can achieve larger pumping rates. The fluid flow causes a vacuum to be formed in the pump suction, which will draw fluid into the impeller suction. Thus, fluid flow will occur from the suction to discharge. The liquid enters the center or eye of the impeller axially, changes direction, and flows radially out between the veins. When the pressure falls below the vapor pressure of the liquid at a given temperature, boiling occurs and small bubbles of vapor are formed. These bubbles will grow in the low pressure area and implode when they're transported to an area of pressure above vapor pressure. The term given to this local vaporization of the fluid is cavitation. 
The collapsing of the bubbles is the area of cavitation we're concerned with, as extremely high pressures are produced, which causes noise and erosion of the metal surface. Centrifugal pumps, although suitable for most general marine duties, suffer in one very important respect. They are not self-priming and require some means of removing air from the suction pipeline and filling it with a liquid. Where the liquid to be pumped is at a higher level than the pump, opening an air release cock near the pump suction will enable the air to be forced out as the pipeline fills up under the action of gravity. This is often referred to as flooding the pump. Alternatively, an air pumping unit can be provided to individual pumps or as a central priming system connected to several pumps. The water ring or liquid ring primer can be arranged as an individual unit mounted on the pump and driven by it, or as a motor-driven unit mounted separately and serving several pumps, known as a central priming system. Where several pumps require a priming aid, for example a cargo pumping system or a number of engine pump rooms, a central priming system is often used. This reduces the number of priming pumps, saving spares, maintenance and cost. With this system, a central priming unit consisting of two or more liquid ring primer pumps is arranged to pull a vacuum on a central tank. The tank has connections to float chambers in each of the suction lines for the system pumps isolated by either manually operated or solenoid operated valves. The priming pumps are controlled by the vacuum of the central tank, cutting in and out as required according to demand. As a system pump is required, the priming connection is opened manually or automatically until good suction is achieved. The illustration shows a typical central priming system including tank, valves, gauges, and switches. The selection of centrifugal pumps depends mainly upon duty and the space available. When assessing the amount of power needed to operate a centrifugal pump, you must always take into account the various losses. Friction loss in bearings and glands, surfaces of impeller and casing. Some impellers are highly polished to minimize friction loss. Head losses in pumps due to shock at entry and exit to impeller vanes and eddies formed by vein edges. Leakage loss in thrust balance devices gland sealing and clearances between cut water and casing and bearing seals. A characteristic curve for a centrifugal pump is obtained by operating the pump at rated speed with the suction open and the discharge valve shut. The discharge valve is then opened in stages to obtain different discharge rates and total head corresponding to them. The data can then be represented graphically as a curve. The illustration shows the characteristic curves for three different types of pumps. Losses can be caused by failure to deliver, capacity reduction, and excessive vibration.
This is a vertical, single stage, single entry, centrifugal pump for general marine use. The main frame and casing, together with a motor support bracket, house the pumping element assembly. The volute casing is split in two halves along a vertical plane. Since the suction and discharge nozzles are provided in the rear half of the casing, the rotating element can be taken out by removing only the front half casing without disturbing the rest of the pump. The pumping element is made up of a top cover, a pump shaft, an impeller, a bearing bush, and a sealing arrangement around the shaft. The sealing arrangement may be a packed gland or a mechanical seal, and the bearing lubrication system will vary according to the type of seal. Replaceable wear rings are fitted in the casing around the top and bottom faces of the impeller. The motor support bracket has two large apertures to provide access to the pumping element, and a coupling spacer is fitted between the motor and pump shaft to enable the removal of the pumping element without disturbing the motor, or vice versa. To connect the motor to the impeller, the shaft has to pass through an aperture in the casing. To allow the shaft to rotate freely in the casing, aperture there needs to be a gap, but this gap needs to be closed off to stop air from being drawn in from atmosphere or liquid from leaking out during operation. There are two common methods packing or mechanical seal. The role of the pump, its speed and the type of liquid being pumped all play a part in deciding which application works best. The incoming liquid enters the double impeller from the top and bottom and passes into the volute casing for discharge in the same way as before. A double entry pump has a lower net positive suction head required characteristic, which will have advantages in poor suction conditions. It should be noted that different impeller sizes could be fitted into a basic pumping element. This enables various discharge head characteristics to be provided for the same basic pump frame. The larger pumps, which are double entry, can achieve flow rates of 10,000 tons per hour. To control the axial movement of the rotating assembly, a balance piston is arranged to counteract the effect of the thrust of the impellers, especially in the multi-stage pumps. When the pump is due for overhaul, it will be necessary to dismantle it to its component parts to examine them for wear. The following procedures are intended as a general guide only, 
and your attention should be drawn to the manufacturer's operational instructions regarding specific pump requirements before commencing to dismantle the pump. In this type, the pressure is developed partly by centrifugal action and partly by the veins, and as the name implies, the flow is both axial and radial through the impeller. Congratulations, you've completed this lesson.